Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I will be discussing about bond yields and more specifically how to calculate it. So most people when they refer to bond yields, they're actually referring to the yield to maturity. And that is what this video is going to be about. Now most videos that I watched on this topic just show you what the definition is and how to calculate it using Excel, which I do think is important. But what I'm going to do in this video a bit differently is I'll go through a scenario and we'll try to formulate a formula for that and we'll see how that works. So I'm going to graph it out and this should make a lot more sense when we do that. So instead of just showing you the final end result, I'll try to build it up step by step. And by the end of the video, you should get a pretty good understanding of the topic. So let's start. So let's say you have a hundred dollars with you. Okay. Now you don't need this money for the next three years. Okay. So you're going to invest it somewhere for the next three years and because you don't need it anymore. So over here, you have two options. Okay. So option one, option two. So let's start off with option one. Now, what you can do is you can put this money in the bank for the next three years and just forget about it. So now in this case, let's just say I'm giving you this number beforehand. Let's just say currently the interest rates are pretty high at 14.2%. Okay. So you don't need this money for the next three years and we're going to compound it. Okay. So compound interest for the next three years. So very quickly, I'll just go over the formula. Um, so the amount you're going to get back is going to be, so let's call it A. It's going to be the principal multiplied by one plus the rate. So in this case, the rate is 14.2% uh, and the number of times we're going to compound it in a time period. So that's just called N. Uh, we'll change that later on. And then we do it to the power of the number of years. So in this case, we're going to compound it for three years. And how many times is it compounded each year? We'll just leave it as N. So in this case, just to make it simple, let's just say the amount is compounded yearly. So N is equal to one. So just to simplify the formula, let's just get rid of N over here. Okay. So this over here is our formula and let's just calculate the actual result. So the principal is a hundred dollars and one plus the rate is 14.2%, which is 14.2 by a hundred to the power of three. So this actually comes up to 148.93. So what this means is that if you keep your hundred dollars in the bank for three years, right? And you let it compound. Uh, for three years at a interest rate of 14.2%, after three years, you get $148.93, okay? So that is option one. Now, what is option two? So option two allows you to keep this $100 in some sort of fixed instrument. Now, it could be anything. Uh, it could be a bond. It could be you giving it as a loan to someone, whatever it is. But we don't care that care about that for now. This is just some sort of fixed instrument. So at year zero, you give the hundred dollars. Now in, so this is how the scheme works for the fixed instrument. Sorry. So at year one, what happens is you get $20. Okay. At year two, you get 20 more dollars. And then at year three, you get the principal amount of a hundred. So now the question is, what is the yield I've gotten out of this? So the simplest thing you can do is you can just sum all these values. Oh, sorry, not including zero, zero. So sum all of these values. So you get 20 plus 20, 40 plus 100, $140. Now, is this your actual yield? Well, it could be, but in this case, it is not. And the reason for that is because YTM or the yield to maturity assumes that the investment is held till the ending. And whatever coupon amount we get or whatever interest we get. So in this case, anytime we get the plus 20 over here, this money is going to be reinvested. We're not just going to pull the $20, uh, $20 or the coupon amount we receive, but we are going to reinvest it at the same interest rate. Okay. So now let's just see what that looks like. So now at year one, I got $20. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it at the bank. Okay. So compound it at the same interest rate at 14.2% for how many years? Now, in this case, by the end of year three, I need the money back. So in this case, it's going to be compounded for two years. Okay. So if you run it through the formula, 
the number you're going to end up getting is after two years, when you compound it at 14.2%, this gives you $26.08, okay? Let's do the same at year two. So now we get the $20. We're not just going to fold it. Instead, we're going to compound it at 14.2%. But in this case, it's only for one year, okay? Because there's only one year left. So now when you put it through the same formula as this over here, what do you get? So in this case, you're going to end up getting 22.84. Cool. Now, what about at year three? So at year three, you, you need the money back. So you don't have enough time to compound it. So the money, the value of it is going to be as it is. So that is $100. So now what is your return? So the return you got over here is the sum of all of these values. So it's not the previous 140, but instead it is 148.92 dollars. Now this is what is interesting. So if you chose option two with your fixed instruments, you end up with 148.92 dollars. Now if you chose option one with a interest rate of 14.2 percent, you end up with 148.93. And let's just uh, that is basically the same thing. So in this case, the bond yield is set to be 14.2%, okay? So this definition should be a lot easier. So a yield, it is basically the equivalent interest rate on a bank account that would pro provide the same output. So in this case, if we had a bank account with 14.2% interest rate, which was compounded for the same time period, we would get the same value as the yield or the yield to maturity. And it's so that what that means is the rate, the YT yield to maturity is 14.2%. Now the question is, how do I come up with this 14.2%? So most people would just say trial and error, but instead what we can actually do is we can pretty sim uh, sim uh, simply formulate this. So essentially this formula over here whatever this math on the left-hand side is, should equate to that of the right-hand side. And that is exactly what we are going to do. So let's come up with a formula to do this, which is going to make a lot more sense. So let's start off with the left-hand side, because that's a lot easier. How exactly are we going to uh, write the bank's compound interest as a formula? So over here, we have a principal amount of a hundred dollars. Okay. And uh, using the same compound formula, we have one plus we have some rate. So uh, just to make it simpler, we'll write it in terms of percentage. So X by 100. So X is going to be the rate. So we don't know that it is 14.2% yet. So interest rate is equal to X. Okay. And now this, the maturity of it is, so we're going to have it for three years. So this is going to be the formula we have for the left-hand side. Now, how are we going to do the same thing on the right-hand side? So we have these three elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite the above thing that is a bit more easier to understand. So let's just get rid of this. So essentially, what do we have over here? So we have year one. So we have some sort of return for year, year one. So let's just call that year one return. And we're going to compound this. So one plus now the rate is going to be the same as the rate that we define here. So the rate is just going to be X, right? So the same rate X by 100. Now for how many years? Now in this case, it's going to be compounded for two years. Okay. So now we have year two return. So year two return. Now remember this return does not have to be constant. Okay. So at year two return, whatever it is, it's going to be compounded at the same rate which is X by 100, the same percentage. But now it's only going to be for one year. Now, finally, we're going to add year three's return to it. Now, in this case, the only thing is that year three, it is not going to have any time to earn interest, okay? So this is going to be the basic thing that we need to simplify. So now let's write the same thing, but let's simplify it in terms of a single formula. Actually, let's leave it out. Over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define, so let's have a summation because that's exactly what's happening. And we're going to start at N is equal to one. 
and until when are we going to go? So we're going to go up to year two. We're not going to include year three because we do not earn any interest on it. Okay. So what is the principal amount in this case? Sorry, the coupon amount. Well, in this case, since it is the same, uh, we would just take 20. Okay. But ideally what we would do is we would do, uh, take the return at N. Okay. But in this case, it's always 20. So let's just write 20. Okay. So 20 times one plus X by 100, right? So that's getting compounded. But now the question is for how many years? So in this case, year one gets compounded for two years. Year two gets compounded for one year. That's nothing else, but the number of years we have minus N, right? So in this case, the number of years we have is three years. And so the first time we have N is equal to one. So at year one, it is three minus N, which is two gets compounded for two years, exactly. Now at year two, so three minus two gets compounded for one year. So this is going to be our little formula. Now, again, like I said, this could be variable, but in this case, since it's 20, let's just leave it like that. And now finally, at the ending of this, we're also going to add the return of the last year, okay? So in this case, that is just 100. So plus 100. So now what we're gonna do, essentially, we have this formula over here and we have this formula over here. Now, if you equate them, the point at which they meet, right? The X value is nothing else but the interest rate. That is going to be the yield of the bond, okay? And that is exactly what we're gonna do in this graph. So if you look at the two above two, that is exactly what I did, okay? So the red line is basically the amount earned from the fixed instrument, okay? So that's the yield we get from the fixed instrument. And now the blue line is from the back. So if you look, there is a intersection point. And where is the intersection point? It's exactly at 14.196. And that means that at that point, at the interest rate of 14.196, the yield we get from both of them is the same. So that means that is the yield of the bond, 14.196%. And if you remember, the interest rate we used over here is the same thing, 14.2%, which is why the calculation worked the way it did. So now let's actually try to understand a few more things. So now let's just say the x uh, has the the x axis has the interest interest rate, right? So let's say the interest rate right now is 5%. Okay. So if the interest rate was 5%, and you invested in your bank in the bank, you would get a, a yield of $115, okay? Now, if the interest rate, uh, the same thing, right? You have a yield to maturity, in this case, of 5%, your fixed instrument would give you a $143. So what would you invest in? You would invest in your, in, in the fixed instrument, in this case, the bond, right? Now, let's just say the interest rates go up, let's say uh, 30%, okay? Now what happens? At 30%, right, the bank is giving you $220 as a return. But at 30%, you're from the fixed instrument, you're only getting $160. And this is exactly what happens in real life as well. Once the, let's say the interest rates go really high, at that point, investing in the bank and leaving it in the bank to accumulate interest is more resourceful. You get more of your return. So in that case, what happens is the price of the fixed instrument is going to decrease. Now, the same way it's true for the opposite. So let's say the interest rates are too low. And in that case, it is better to invest in the bond. And in that case, the bond's price is going to go up. So this also kind of shows that relationship. And I personally think looking at this through a graph makes a lot more sense. And you can make a lot more of analogies based on it. So if you even look at it, you could see how far they end up diverging over time. You can also see a lot more things with this uh, graphical approach, right? So let's just take an example. So let's say the coupon amount you receive goes down to 10. Okay? Let's see what happens to the yield to maturity. So the yield to maturity comes down to 6.886%. It decreased, right? Because you're getting back a lot lesser. But, and if you, you can also look at the graphs, right? 
So only at a very early stage, right, uh, which is less than 6%, it is better to invest in the fixed instrument. Or else, almost always after that, the back is better, okay? So let's just say now you actually end up getting a lot of money uh, for, as your coupon. Uh, pretty unrealistic, but let's say you get 100. Now, what happens over here? So in this case, the uh, yield, the bond yield is going to be a lot higher, 83%. So, I mean, pretty unrealistic numbers, but that goes to show that since you're getting back so much, unless the interest rate goes above 83, investing in that fixed instrument is almost always better. And one more thing to note is look at the gap between the two graphs. It's not as deep as before, right? When we had a lot smaller number. So let's just say we go back to 10. Look at the gap between them. It's a lot larger, right? So I think this graphical approach does make a bit more sense, especially to understand further concepts. So hopefully that helped. And thanks a lot for watching, guys.